Friends, this is really devastating, and it's almost everywhere on my homestead where I have these specific plants, and it's really hard to control. But come on, let me show you this problem that we have, and it might be the same as yours. So hopefully this video can help you out. So we are gonna talk about this grape killing fungus and how to combat it. Let's get going. Well, what is this? It's called black rot. And the scientific name for it is right here at the bottom of the screen. It is a fungus transmitted by spores. And we've tried to combat it over the last few years on the homestead. But to combat it, you have to be incredibly diligent, especially if you are using organic methods. So black rot will infect the shoots, the berries, the stems, the tendrils, the leaves, almost everything on the entire plant. The first signs of it are on the leaves in the spring, and let me show you what that looks like. So right here is a telltale sign of the black rot fungus on your leaves. It'll leave this dead ring or something like this. It can blacken up a little bit at some points, but these are full of spores in these areas. You can see that I have a little bit of them on the plants, but most of them now are hosted within the berries. Right here, you can see how it manifests itself on some of the stems. And up here as well, you can see on the leaf stem how it looks. It's like a purplish dark color. And then of course, our leaves have these small blotches on them. But by far the area where it attacks the worst is in the berries. You can see how they're black and shriveled up and almost mummified. That's what happened to this cluster right here. And then most of the mummified berries fell off onto the ground. But on the berries, it will start as a little brown spot and it will look like it's starting to rot. And then of course, it turns black really quick and shrivels up into that mummy. Now the mummies, much more than any other part of the plant, are the highest concentration of the fungal spores. So if you see these mummies, you need to get rid of them immediately. Because what happens is they drop off onto the ground and perpetuate the cycle year after year after year. Now we're gonna talk about the steps to take to combat this disease. First of all, if your plant has already grown out, then we want to bring more light and air into the plant. So you can see ours is very thick, and this was a mistake of mine. I did not prune out these canes enough. So we've had a very wet spring and summer, and wet weather and humid weather especially down here in our zone in Texas, really affect fungal growth on a lot of different plants. And it really jumpstarts black rot to get going on your grapes. A big way to control this is to actually cut back the grapevines by quite a bit. Open it up in the center and get air and light down into here. Now we've got a decent amount of light on these, but since it's so thick, it is holding moisture in in the inside, especially in that fruit zone in this area. And as an aside, if you are interested in how to build grape trellises, click on the video at the top of the screen. Now, when you're cutting back this material, you don't wanna leave it laying next to your grapevines. You wanna take it far away and either bury it or burn it. So now you can see we've opened up this area quite a bit. We've taken a lot off the top and there is much more airflow and sunlight getting down into here. Now you're never gonna get sunlight on the back if you are going east to west with this. So it might be better to go north to south with these grapevines. Those are a few early steps that you can take to try to mitigate the black rot. Keep sun in there and keep airflow high. Now we're gonna talk about sanitation and then after that we are gonna talk about treatment. So in terms of sanitation, if you've got it on your plants already, we want to remove most of this material, but most importantly, remove the mummies. Now, I know this can be painful because you've seen berries grow. Some of them are actually ripening and are potentially edible, but the rest of them are not. And you want to get these out of here. So we've got a plastic bag. We're gonna put it around each cluster that has mummies on it, which in my case is pretty much all of them. And we're gonna clip them off and throw them away. I just had a cluster fall off in my hand because it is completely dead. It's going right in the bag. This one still has some green to it. I'm gonna clip it off and throw it away. 
Here's a better close up of what these things look like. Here are some small mummies and you do not want these things dropping on the ground. You can see some fruit that's infected and starting to rot. You can see ones mid rot and some that are almost completely gone. If the mummies drop on the ground, they are incredibly hard to remove because they are down in the grass. You can't hardly even see them. The best thought that I have to combat that is to get some sort of leaf vacuum and try to suck them up off the ground out of the area. But now let's talk about prevention and treatment and some organic methods to do that. Our number one way that we try to combat these diseases on the property is with copper sulfate. You can see I've got one of our sprayers here labeled and this always has copper in it. For us, we are using a one ounce to one gallon ratio and we are spraying within certain intervals, about once a week. But pay attention to the instructions on your bottle of copper sulfate on how many times you can spray in a particular season. The copper does do well, but you have to get it at the right time. And that timing is one week before bloom to about four weeks after bloom in the spring. And you can also use an overwintering dormant oil, which most of the time is made with neem oil. But if it's raining in the spring and thunderstorming like crazy constantly, it's very hard to keep this at bay. You can also use sulfur and actually vinegar to combat fungal infections on your plants. A one ounce to one gallon ratio of vinegar to water does a really good job at combating some diseases around the property, especially on things like this. But for us, it was a real challenge to get all those mummies that fell off onto the ground last year. And you can see it manifested itself once again. There's also an organically approved fungicide called Trianium Shield. I've read great things about it, but I haven't tried it here on our property yet. Now this does affect a lot of different varieties of grapes. We've got Champanelle here in the middle, and then we've got Black Spanish on either side, and we've got some Red Flame seedless on our north property. It hasn't yet made it over to the Red Flame, but it really affects the Black Spanish really bad. And let me show you what it's doing to the Champanelle. It's not as bad, and hopefully I can keep it at bay. Some of the berries look okay, and I'm gonna get these mummies out of here as soon as I can. But you can see the beginnings of the black rot on some of these. The leaves have smaller spots on them than the black Spanish, but they are still present. And you can see for the Champanelle that it has a lot more light and air coming through it. It's a much smaller vine. And these black Spanish are much more vigorous growers. I have pruned this black Spanish four times already since the spring. It's only June and I have not pruned this Champanelle yet. Stuff like this you have to deal with even if it is really devastating because these grapes provide such amazing nutrition for our family. Three years ago we had some amazing grapes from here. We juiced them all. It was so healthy for our bodies. So an ounce of prevention is worth what? Maybe a ton of production? So at the beginning of the season, make sure you are spraying down things and hopefully you can get off the ground those spores and those mummified berries that are down there and get them away from your plants. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments section below the video. Now go click on this playlist right here, which shows you everything we have done with our grapes, including training them up from the ground to the trellis. Have a beautiful blessed day. We will see you on the next video. Bye.